Welcome to this lesson, Literature in English for Beginners, Part 2. This is Unit 1, Poetry Appreciation. This is Part 1, presented by Samuel Appiah and Sam. Poems are to be enjoyed. Indeed, poems are not to scare students, and poetry is not to scare students. Poems, in effect, are actually to be enjoyed. Poems are artistic expressions. They demand that you appreciate them before you begin to reduce them to something explainable. Often the most brilliant elements in a poem are very subtle and will be felt before they are understood. Analyzing poetry offers you a special opportunity to interact with a work of art. This interaction is what we often refer to as poetry appreciation. And that's what we're going to do in this lesson. Pay attention and learn to enjoy poems. Do not let poems scare you. Appreciation simply means to evaluate and analyze a poem in order to have a better understanding. And that is what we're going to do in this lesson. We're going to learn poetry appreciation. Why don't students enjoy poems? Well, the fear of poetry makes it difficult for students to enjoy poetry. Many of you actually don't enjoy poetry because you are afraid of poems. But poems, remember, are to be enjoyed. Keep telling yourself poems are to be enjoyed. They are not to scare students. Do not be afraid of poems. Enjoy them rather. It is important to overcome this fear through practice and a clear understanding that poems are to be enjoyed. Don't forget, poems are to be enjoyed. Poems are not to scare students. Appreciation enables us to get a better understanding of the poem and to notice its beauty. Sometimes because we are so scared of the poem, we fail to see the beauty in the poem. But when we just relax and try to appreciate the poem, then we realize that the poem is saying a lot and indeed it is full of beauty. To appreciate a poem, it is important to break the poem down into five aspects. So anytime you have a poem, don't let it scare you. Just look at the poem from these five aspects that we're going to look at. These five aspects include the issues in the poem, the physical structure of the poem, the patterns that we find in the poem, the language especially the poetic use of language in the poem, and of course, the type of poem. Once we break the poem down into these, we are able to actually understand the poem and of course, see the beauty that is in the poem as well. Now let's look at these one after the other, beginning with the issues. The issues, that's the first aspect when we want to understand a poem, we need to understand the issues in the poem. Because the issues in the poem are actually the purpose, the reason for the writing of the poem. So we look out for the issues that are in the poem. Now, after reading the poem two or three times, don't, is it, don't just read the poem once and um, let it scare you, no. Read it as many times as you can, at least two or three times. 
So after reading the poem two or three times, it is important to determine the basic design of the poem by considering the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why, the situation. There is a situation in the poem. There is something the poet is talking about. Who, who is talking? What is he, is he saying? When is he saying it? Where is he saying it? And why is he saying what he's saying? So after reading the poem several times, you need to come up with these, with answers to these. And this is what will help you to gain insight to, to, to the poem. This is what will help you to understand the poem. Now remember what we are doing is what is to enable you understand any poem so that you can react to it. If you don't understand the poem, you cannot answer any question on it. So for you to understand the poem, as I have told you already, you try to break it down into these five aspects. And the first one as we are looking at is the issues. And we, got, we, we are looking at the issues and how you will be able to bring out the issues that are in the poem. So read the poem as many times as possible and determine the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why of the situation presented in the poem. Now the following questions should help you bring out the issues in the poem. First question is, what is being raised in the poem? What conflicts or issues does the poem present, address or question? Some poems will just address a certain situation, some will question, some will um, just present a certain situation. Now, what conflicts are, are found there? What issues are found there? So that's the first question. Find out the issues that the poem is reason. What is being raised? Is it talking about death? Is it talking about life? Is it talking about love? Is it talking about, about um, and gifts? Is it talking about beauty? What is the poem talking about? So you try to answer this question. Now the second question is, who is the speaker? Define and describe the speaker and the speaker's voice. Who is speaking? Do we find the speaker as part of the poem? Or the speaker is standing somewhere and telling us what is happening to some other people? If he is standing somewhere and telling us about what is happening to some other people, in most cases then he may be using the third person point of view. If he is part of it, then of course he's actually using the first person point of view. So you need to identify who the speaker is. Does, does it look like the speaker is elderly? Does it look like the speaker is young? Does it look like the speaker is frustrated? Does it look like the speaker is happy? Who is the speaker? And who is the audience? Are other characters involved? So note all these. Now the third question is, what happens in the poem? Consider the plot or basic design of the action. How are the issues introduced, sustained, resolved? What is actually happening in the poem? Do we find people fighting? Do we um, find, find people complaining? What is happening in the poem? Bring out the exact thing that is happening in the poem. How are they? How is the plot? What is contained in the plot? And how is it sustained? How is it resolved if there's a conflict? Now, in the, the fourth question is, when does the action occur? What is the date and or time of day? Does the action 
happen in the daytime? Does it happen in the night time? Does it look like something that happened in post post colonial Africa? Does it look like something that happened in colonial Africa? Does it look like something that happened in the medieval period? Does it look like something that uh, that uh, that is that is placed in in the in in the, in in a, in a time that is past, in a time that is present, in a time that is futuristic? What is the time? In terms of date, what's the time? In terms of the, the, the time of the day. Note all these. You will notice that as you do this, you are gaining ins further insight into the poem. You are actually helping yourself to understand the poem. The fifth question is, where is the speaker? Describe the physical location of the action that the speaker, uh, that's the physical location, add anything to the poem. So, is the, is, the, is the poem talking about a place like a beach? Is it talking about um, uh, a rustic environment? Is it talking about a city environment? Is it talking about wh where is the poem situated? Where is the action of the of the poem situated? Physical. Bring that out. And do you think where it is where the action is located adds anything to the poem? Does it make the poem better or worse? Note it. Now the next thing is why does the speaker feel compelled to speak at this moment why is the speaker telling what he's telling why is he telling us what he's telling us why is he talking what is the speaker's motivation what makes the speaker bring out what he's bringing out what message does the speaker want to give every writer who puts pen to paper actually has a certain message to communicate so in in the writer writing this poem what was the motivation? What was the purpose? What does he intend to tell the people who will read this poem? The seventh question is, how does the speaker feel and speak? What is the atmosphere in the poem? You try to based you try to look at how the speaker is feeling based on what he's saying and how he's saying it. So look at how the speaker is talking. Look at the kind of words he's using. Does it look like he's talking in a harsh tone? Does it look like he's talking in a soft tone? Does it look like um, he feels happy or sad? What's the general atmosphere in the poem? Does it look like a happy situation, a sad situation, a gloomy one? Note this also. Now, these are the seven questions we need to answer to be able to know and understand the issues in a poem. By the time we finish answering this, these seven questions, we will have a good understanding of the poem. The poem might look very difficult in the end, uh, in the beginning, but by the time we find answers to these seven questions, we would have had a good understanding of the poem, of the issues in the poem. And these issues are the things that we often need to answer a lot of questions. We will later look at the four other aspects um, that we, we, we enumerated at the beginning. Remember, at the moment, we are looking at the issues. And we have seen seven questions that we need to answer to be able to bring out the issues in the poem. Take a poem, try and go through, and try and identify or answer these seven questions on your own. Now, questions, note this. Questions 1, 2, and 3 deal with the subject matter of the poem. When you are able to answer questions 1, 2, and 3, then you, you now know the subject matter of the poem. Now, what is subject matter? 
subject matter of a poem is the actual things that are contained in the poem. If the poem is talking about Kofi who went to school one morning and uh, beat his friend and his friend fell down and his friend did not rise up again and he was arrested. These are the actual things that are contained in the poem. These are the subject, this is the subject matter of the poem. Now be careful when you are dealing with theme because theme is different from subject matter. Now subject matter is the actual things contained in the poem. The theme is the message you get when you go through the actual things, the story that is presented in the poem. Now, questions four and five deal with the setting of the poem. Question four and five, you know, question four and five was asking when the action happened and where the action happened. And, you know, setting refers to the place and time of the action in the story. So when you answer questions four and five, you've actually dealt with the setting of the poem. So you, you, you can actually answer questions based on setting. Question six deals with the theme of the poem. Question six deals with the theme of the poem. Remember, question six was asking why the speaker feels uh, why why the speaker feels compelled to present what he's presenting. Why the speaker um, um, is what message the speaker is presenting. What motivated the speaker to write what he what he wrote. That is what gives you the theme of the poem. So by the time you go through this exercise. By the time you answer question six, you would have known the theme or themes that are found in the poem. Later, we will look more into theme and, of course, the other aspects as well. But this exercise is to help you understand the poem so that you can now form an opinion on the poem and be able to uh, um, know how you will handle questions on the poem. So theme refers to the main or central idea of a work. It is the message of the speaker. It is the purpose for the writing of the poem. Question seven deals with the tone, mood, and attitude of the speaker in the poem. Tone refers to how the voice in the poem is heard. Is it harsh? Is it soft? Is it assertive? Is it strong? Is it weak? And mood is the feeling that pervades the poem, the feeling that, that we find in the poem. Is it a happy mood? Is it a sad mood? Is it, uh, is it a joyous one? The mood that we find throughout the poem. Sometimes it changes, just like the tone. Sometimes it changes. Sometimes you may find a tone harsh or, 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 or soft. And it changes along the line. So sometimes we have poems that have changing tones and changing moods, of course. Now, so mood is the feeling the tone evokes in the reader. So when you read a poem, the feeling that you get from the poem as a result of reading it, as a result of how the writer, the, 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 the voice in the poem is speaking, that feeling that you have, that is the mood of the poem. So the mood in the poem helps us to identify the writer's attitude to the issue or the person or persons in the poem. In fact, the mood that you find in the poem is what enables you to know how the writer is acting towards the issue or the people in the, issue, the, people in the poem. If he likes the people, if he's happy with the people, you will see it from the mood that he brings based on the, the kind of words he uses, you will know that you will, you will realize that he has presented a happy mood about some people. You can see he likes those people, or he has a soft spot for those people. But you will find that he is quite harsh on some other people. Then you know his attitude towards these other people is 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 different. So tone refers to how the voice in the poem is heard. Mood is a feeling that pervades the poem, uh, and it is the feeling the tone evokes in the reader, and the mood in the poem helps us to identify the writer's attitude to the issue or the person or persons in the poem.
Let us now try to answer these seven questions in a poem. The poem is titled, um, Death Be Not Proud. Another title is, uh, I think, Sonnet 10 by John Donne. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be, much pleasure then from thee much more must flow. And soon as our best men with thee do go, rests of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art a slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and thus with poison, war, and sickness dwell. And poppy or charms can make us sleep as well. And better than thy stroke, I swells thou then. One shot sleep past, we wake eternally. And death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Beautiful poem. Beautiful poem by all standards. Trying to make death look little. Let me read it again. Death, be not proud. Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful. For thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow. Die not a poor death. Nor yet can thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be. Much pleasure, then from thee much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go. Rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art a slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and thus with poison war and sickness dwell and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke why swell thou then one short sleep past we wake eternally and death shall be no more death thou shall die now let's try to answer the seven questions to be able to bring out the issues in the power. So the first question, what is being raised? What is the poem talking about? The poem obviously talks about death and it raises questions with respect to the position of death. The poet tries to question death and try to belittle it that it is not as powerful as people make it look like. So he challenges the general view, the power of death. The second question, who is the speaker? Who is he talking to? The speaker speaks directly to death, making the poem an apostrophe. So we actually see somebody talking to death. As if death were present. Now, when you speak to somebody who is not present as if it were present, then you are using what we call in literature an apostrophe. And that's what the poet does. Talking to death as if death were present with him. The second, the third question, what happens in the poem? What happens in the poem? The speaker tells death that it is not as powerful as it appears and challenges death that it is nothing but sleep, since one day there will be an eternal wake. So throughout the poem, we see that all that the poet is trying to say is, uh, yes, people think you are powerful, but you are not. You are just like sleep. When we sleep, we wake up. You are just like rest. We rest, we wake up. You are, you are nothing. You are just a slave, because after all, when we sleep, when we die, just as we wake up when we sleep, one day we will wake up. Here we can actually really find that the speaker believes in life after death. He believes that when you die, there's a day coming when you will wake up, like Christians believe. 
that of course when Christ comes, the dead will rise up from um, the grave. And so it will be like they had slept and he had woken up. And so John Donne believes death is just like sleep. And I think we find these a lot in Christian writings because Christians actually believe that death is just like sleep. Now let's look at the next question. The fourth question. When does the action occur? When does the action occur? The action in the poem is not time bound. The poem presents past, present and future. This is understandable since death, the subject of this poem, is not time bound. You know that we are the poem is talking about death and death doesn't know any time it can come in the morning in the afternoon in the evening it can come any day it has happened in the past it has happened um, in the present it will happen in the future so he doesn't situate it in any particular time frame the fifth question where is the speaker well the speaker in the poem is not located in any specific place this is understandable since death the subject of this poem is not place bound. Of course, death can happen anywhere in the sea, on land, um, um, in the air, anywhere in any country. Death happens. So he doesn't situate it in the village or in the in a in a in a city or anywhere. Because of course, death is not place bound. The sixth question. Why does the speaker feel compelled to Bring the messages. Bring what message is the speaker actually bringing? In other words, what is the theme of the poem? That's what the sixth question does. The speaker is communicating a message that death is powerless and needs not be feared, since it will be defeated. Later, when we when we learn to write about theme, we will, we will realize that now once we are able to identify this theme ourselves, now we just have to find. Um, support evidence from the poem from the beginning to the end to support this this message that we are saying is found in the poem and that's and that's all just as simple as that so once you're able to identify the theme when you have to write about it which we will look at later all you have to do is just look for evidence so the the the, the when you once you draw the theme once you get a theme what is left if you have to write about things, it's just to find evidence by looking at how the, the, the message is arranged in the poem. Now the seventh question. How does the speaker feel? And remember that deals with the tone, the mood, and the attitude. The speaker is assertive or forceful in tone and consequently shows a confident mood as he shows his disapproval for the way death has been made to appear so powerful so you have to, you have been able to bring out how he's he's speaking the tone is assertive or, or forceful and it's a confident mood and through the confident mood now we see that he's confident but he disapproves of how death has been made to look so powerful. Now this brings us to the end of this lesson for more videos. Of course, you can WhatsApp us on 0244 on the number that's there. Now in the second part of this lesson, we shall look at the four other aspects of the poetry appreciation process, that is the physical structure, the patterns, the poetic use of language, and the type of poem. Don't miss it. There are other videos on the various poems, and so for more videos. Don't forget to get in touch with us. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure you, you put down something. You make your notes as you watch and listen to this video. God bless you.